Hello everyone and welcome to our class video about reflections. Our learning goal is that you will be able to reflect a geometric figure over either an axis like the x or y axis or over a diagonal line. So if we're talking about reflections we should probably start with what is a reflection although you probably learned about this in middle school. A reflection transforms a figure by flipping it over a line. This line is called the reflection line or sometimes referred to as the mirror line because that's where the mirror would be if you're reflecting it on the other side. Kind of like you see a copy of yourself on the other side of a mirror if you look in a mirror. Okay. The way to carry out a reflection is that each point of the original figure is moved to a new location that is the same distance away from the reflection line but on the opposite side. So, if you are two feet from the mirror in your bathroom, then your reflection appears to be two feet behind the mirror. Same concept here. So, let's actually do it to a geometric figure. Okay, so we're going to reflect this figure, this quadrilateral ABCD, over the x-axis. So, the x-axis is right there. So, like we just talked about, we'll need to count how far away each point is from the axis. Point A is two units away from the axis. So its new location, A prime, needs to be two, the distance of two units on the other side of the axis. B is also two units away from the axis, so I need to count two on the other side to find B prime. C is only one unit away from the axis, so its reflection, C prime, is on the other side by only one unit. D is also one unit away, so D prime is one unit away on the other side. Okay, let me erase all these little marks so we can actually see where the figure is. Alright, there we go. Notice that it's okay for the figure to intersect the x-axis and to intersect itself after it's been reflected. Okay? but you can see that it's been flipped. The top is now on the bottom. Okay, so let's record the coordinates and see what happened. A prime is negative two, negative two. B prime is zero, negative two. C prime is two, one. And D is negative one, one. So what happened to the coordinates when we reflected it? Right? So, hmm. The x-coordinate stayed the same. Negative 2 stayed negative 2, 0 stayed 0, 2 stayed 2, and negative 1 stayed negative 1. Okay, so x is going to stay x. But what happened to the y's? Notice that a y-coordinate of 2 changed into negative 2 on both a and b, and negative 1 changed to positive 1 on c and d. So we, we can write that as negative y, because even when in the case of the negative 1, a negative negative 1 is positive. So 2 became negative 2, and negative 1 became positive 1. In other words, the y-coordinates changed sign, and that's what the minus in front of the y indicates. And because the negative times a negative is a positive. Okay? So notice the difference here. This is very important. When you're reflecting over the x-axis, it's the y-coordinates that change sign. Okay? How about reflecting over the y-axis then? Well, if when we reflected over the x-axis, the y-coordinates change sign, then when we reflect over the y-axis, we could predict that the x-coordinates are going to change sign. Let's try it and see what happens. All right? I'm going to let you guys pause the video, try reflecting it over the y-axis, get your coordinates, and then replay the, vid or play the video from that point and see if you got it right. Alright, so let's see if you did it right. Here's the y-axis. A prime will be here because its pair coordinate A is two units on the other side of the axis. Notice that B doesn't move. It's on the axis already, so there's nowhere to reflect it to. It just stays there. C will be two units on the other side, and D will be one unit on the other side. 
So here's your figure after it's been reflected over the y-axis. Your coordinates are 2, 2, 0, 2, negative 2, negative 1, and 1, negative 1. Okay? Did what we predict happen? Well, yes. Notice that all of the x-coordinates changed sign. If they were negative, they became positive, and if they were positive, they became negative. Except, of course, for 0, because negative 0 doesn't really mean anything. All right, so we could write that as negative x to show that it's changing sign. The y coordinates didn't change at all, so we'll just leave it as y. All right, so that covers reflecting over the x and y axes. Oh, yeah, I want to point out again. Remember, there's this opposite relationship here. When you're reflecting over the y axis, the x coordinates change sign. Okay? All right, so let's do one more type of reflection you may not have done before, which is reflection over diagonal line. In this case, we're going to reflect over the line y equals x. This has a special name because it's used quite a bit in algebra. It's called the inverse. All right, so let's go about doing that reflection here. There's the line y equals x. That's the line where every point where y is the same as x, like 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, so on and so forth. All right, so we're going to reflect it over this line. But how are we going to do it since it's diagonal? When you reflect over a diagonal line, you're going to count perpendicular to the reflection line. In this case, our reflection line has a slope of 1, because we're going a rise of 1 and a run of 1. If you recall from what we did earlier this year, a slope perpendicular to 1 over 1 would be negative 1 over 1. Okay, so we're going to count with a slope of negative 1, which is just diagonally with a negative slope in this case. Notice that C is not going to move. It's on the line already, so there's no place for us to reflect it to. Let's do for D. I'm going to count diagonally to the line. So, D is one and a half diagonal units away from the line. I can't really say that it's a distance of one and a half because we're, that's not, we're, count, we're, we're not using the grid, we're counting diagonally, but diagonal units is helpful for just counting it onto the other side. Okay, so since it was one and a half on that side of the line, I need to count one and a half on the other side of the line. There's my new D prime. Okay, let's count it for A. Here's one, two, three, and a half diagonal units. So I need to count the same on the other side. Here's a half, one, two, three. There's my coordinate for A prime. Let's also go for B. One, two, and a half. Notice that I did not count along the side. That's what people tend to do. You count diagonally on the grid because we need to go with that slope of negative one over one. All right, so it's two and a half, so I need to go half, one, two. There's B. Let me get all those lines out of the way. All right, there's our figure. Let's record the coordinates and see what happened. A prime is 4, negative 3, B prime is 4, negative 1, C is still 1, 1, because it didn't move, and D is 1, negative 2. Do you see what happened to the coordinates here? Ah, if you notice, like, negative 3, 4 became 4, negative 3. Negative 1, 4 became 4, negative 1. 1, 1 stayed 1, 1, and negative 2, 1 became 1, negative 2 the x and y coordinates switched places. So my mapping then would be xy changing to yx. This is a special mapping that goes with the inverse that is the reflection over the line y equals x. Okay, This is the one we'll mostly focus on. We could do other diagonal lines, but we're going to focus on over the line y equals x. So you can either count diagonally to the line or just remember that the x and y coordinates switch places. All right, so hope that all makes sense, and I guess I'll see you guys in class.